Hello, everyone, and welcome to this talk, Block Granularity Aware Caching at SPA 2021. My name is Charles McCuffey, and I'll be giving the talk. So we're going to start by making sure that we're all on the same page with the traditional model of caching, which focuses on the performance of a particular layer of the memory hierarchy known as a cache, which stores a certain amount of data in it. And a cache receives requests from a processor or some other source for particular data items. When the data item is not in cache, the cache has to send the requests on to a layer of storage below it, which has all of the data that exists. The storage will fetch the data requested and send it back to the cache. Whereupon the cache will bring the data item in um, and put it in the cache space, evicting another data item or multiple data items if necessary to make space. When this is done, it can return the data to the requester, providing the requested data. And the idea is that in, if there are future requests to this particular data item within a short enough amount of time, you don't have to take the trip to storage to get the data. So by caching intelligently, we can minimize the number of round trips to storage and the costs associated with them. And in this particular talk, we're going to look at how caching is impacted by spatial locality. So typical caching models treat storage as a black box where the data exists and it's accessed and it has some costs, but you don't really worry about how that works. But if you open up most storage devices, you'll find that they usually consist of a long term storage medium where the majority of data resides, along with a small uh, buffer that's used to operate on the data. So when it's being read from or written to or changed, it goes into this buffer, which can be accessed much more cheaply than the long term storage. And in this work, we're going to take advantage of that buffer to do um, caching that takes advantage of spatial locality. In particular, our model, the block granularity aware model, looks like a traditional caching model where you have a cache of size k and it serves axes as we discussed earlier. But with the modification that the data items are grouped into blocks of at most b. So the total universe of items is partitioned into groups and each group contains at most b items in it. And in this model, we say that each block loaded by the cache is charged a unit cost, or the, the, the typical model where you pay some amount per item loaded. And our work provides the first theoretical foundation for spatial locality and caching with the block granularity model. In particular, we start by showing that the offline version of this problem is NP complete. Um, using a reduction from variable size caching, where data items can have different size. And we reduce that to the block granularity aware caching problem by treating variable size items as if uh, they were approximations using uh, different numbers of data items corresponding to the same block in the block granularity aware problem. But our, the majority of our work is focused on competitive ratios, which looks at comparing some optimal, or excuse me, some deterministic online algorithm, in this case LRU of size k, against the optimal algorithm that can know the trace in advance of size h. And we're trying to take the ratio of the cost of our online algorithm over the cost over the optimal algorithm and we're taking the maximum ratio across all traces. For traditional caching problems, um, and in particular LRU, this ratio is known to be a K over K minus H plus one, and this is an optimal lower bound proven by Slater and Chargin in 1985. In the block granularity aware model though, we provide different results. So this graph here um, shows a few different lines where the x-axis is the size of the optimal cache we're comparing against uh, for a constant value of k and b, and the y-axis is the competitive ratio. So higher means there's a larger difference between the deterministic online policy and the optimal offline policy. So the line in blue here is the slater Targin bound that I just mentioned, the k over k minus h plus one. The orange line is our general uh, lower bound for deterministic policies in the block granularity aware model, which is roughly k plus bh over k minus h plus one. 
And then we also have lower bounds for item caches and block caches, which are particular uh, types of caches commonly used to deal with the granularity transitions we're looking at. Item caches operate on the granularity of singular data items. They load and evict at that granularity. And we show that they perform well when K and H are very close together, but they have a floor to their competitive ratio of the block size B. And in particular, the uh, competitive ratio, the lower bound for the competitive ratio that we show is B times K minus B plus one over K minus H plus one. Block caches, on the other hand, operate at block granularity. They load entire blocks at a time and evict entire blocks at a time. And they perform well when K is much larger than H, in particular, larger than B times H. But they perform extremely poorly when that's not the case. And the competitive ratio we show for block caches is K over K minus B times H minus 1. In addition to these lower bounds, we also provide an upper bound for competitive ratios. And we do this by designing a po practical policy called item block layered partitioning. And the idea behind this policy is that the cache is split up into two layers, the item layer and the block layer, which each operate on the particular granularity that their name implies. So the item layer loads and evicts items at a time, and the block layer loads and evicts blocks at a time. And there's a little bit of subtlety here because when you receive requests, if they just go to both layers, then the block, both layers are gonna suffer the problems that we saw in the lower bound area. But by routing requests such that the item layer receives requests first and the block layer only sees requests that missed the item layer, we're able to avoid the, um, the bad cases for a block policy by having um, a sort of minimum uh, temporal locality already covered by the item layer. And we're able to prove an upper bound for this policy using a new uh, proof technique for competitive ratios. Um, our technique relies on designing a dynamic worst case trace where we design our trace specifically so that all accesses are misses for the online policy we're trying to come up with a bound for. And then we analyze the performance of the optimal cache on this worst case trace, accounting for both temporal locality, which is the traditional way caches get hits, um, where an item is accessed multiple times, and spatial locality, the new element introduced by the block granularity aware problem. Um, in the diagram here, you see the axes to T show temporal locality, and the axes to the uh, S block show spatial locality, and how the optimal cache is, space is used for both of those localities. And using this technique, we're going to design a linear program whose goal is to maximize the competitive ratio, which in this case is the length of the rectangle we're looking at over the length of that rectangle minus the number of hits opt is able to achieve in the rectangle with constraints that look at both the number of accesses in the rectangle and the cache usage. These constraints are a little bit loose in order to make a feasible problem, but they still give us good results. And in particular, with this technique, we're able to show that item block layered partitioning has this upper bound in purple here on the graph, which is much closer to the lower bound than the baseline policies we compare against. In particular, for um, the interesting area of the curve, our upper bounds, higher order terms are k times k plus 2bh over k minus h squared, which is off from the lower bound by at most a factor of three and often less. Another way of looking at this is if you look at the sort of salient points that you might think about, which in the simple paging problem with LRU is just a uh, constant augmentation of a factor of two results in a competitive ratio in a factor of two. Um, in the block granularity aware problem, you need a um, B times augmentation in order to get a constant ratio. And essentially your ratio and your augmentation multiplied together give you something that's order of B. That's both true for our lower bound and our upper bound, which again differs by at most a factor of three. And you can sort of see throughout the salient points that it's very close and off by small constant factors. But as we look at competitive ratios in this problem, we find something really interesting. 
and because of the fact that in the block granularity aware problem, localities have different growth rates, the relative performance of the optimal cache changes for traces that have different amounts of locality. And this means that the relative importance of performance on those traces for the, our policy changes, which means that competitive ratios are really uh, not as effective for determining what the right thing to do is as they are in other caching problems, even with the problems they already have. So in summary, we looked at how to account for spatial locality and caching through the block granularity aware caching model. We've provided complexity results and looked at competitive ratios with both lower and upper bounds, as well as provided interesting insight into the issues that occur with this problem. Thank you all for your time.